This is the Arctic tundra. Located in only four places in the world, its landscape is to behold. Pinpointed in the northern hemisphere and extending south to the coniferous forests of the Taiga, the Arctic is known for its desert-like conditions whose growing seasons ranges from 50 to 60 days. Rainfall may vary in different regions of the Arctic. Yearly precipitation, including mountain snow, is 15 to 25 centimeters, or 6 to 10 inches, ranging from temperatures negative 34 degrees Celsius, or negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, in the winter, to 3 to 12 degrees Celsius, or 37 to 54 degrees Fahrenheit, in the summer. Little do people know about the raging ecosystem war in the Arctic tundra. Under the desolate temperatures of the tundra, only low shrubs and reindeer mosses can grow. Low shrubs and grasses grow in land where soil lies upon. Soil is formed slowly. A layer of permanently frozen soil called permafrost exists consisting of mostly gravel and finer material. When water saturates the upper surface, bogs and ponds may form providing moisture for plants. There is no deep root system in the vegetation of the Arctic tundra. However, there is still a wide variety of plants that are able to resist the cold climate. There are about 1,700 kinds of plants in the Arctic and sub-Arctic. All of the plants are adapted to sweeping winds and disturbances of soil. These producers gleam their energy from inexhaustible sun and nutrients are provided by the soil. Mosses grow in water and wetland environments. They also receive their energy through soil and sun. Insects, lemmings, and hares, and squirrels, and caribou are all land animals. Little birds of the same category live and perch upon the trees and high ledges. Esoteric to the diet of the birds are the few insects that live there. All of these organisms consume low shrubs, mosses, and grasses to gain energy. Falcons, a fierce bird of prey, consumes vowels, lemmings, and smaller birds. Competing with the falcons in the secondary consumer group are the arctic foxes. Arctic foxes live underground and consume vowels, lemmings, hares, and squirrels. Moving up in the food chain are the snowy owls, like myself. I prey on the oh-so-tasty arctic foxes. Another tertiary consumer, my competitor, is the polar bear. The polar bear lives on land and consumes caribou, fish, and seals. The polar bear has evolved from the brown bear that has been geographically isolated by glaciers. In the Arctic tundra aquatic system, the narwhals, in the secondary consumer group, live in the ocean and consume fish and squid. Another animal from this group is the harp seal. The harp seal live in the water and ocean environment and consume fish. Fish, which are the primary consumer group, live in the water. The fish consume mosses and seaweed. Animals are adapted to handle long, cold winters and breed and raise their young quickly in the summer. Animals, such as mammals and birds, also have additional insulation from fat. Many animals hibernate in the winter because food isn't abundant. Another alternative is to migrate south in the winter like birds do. Reptiles and amphibians 
are few or absent because of the extremely cold temperatures. Because of constant immigration and emigration, the population continually isolates. Plankton, who are decomposers, live in the mosses and get their energy from consuming dead animals. Another animal in the decomposer group are the microbes. The microbes live at the bottom of the ocean. Over hundreds of thousands of years, there have been different evolutionary changes to the Arctic environment and the communities that live in it. The narwhal is an ontodite or a toothed whale, but unlike all other toothed whales, it has no teeth in its mouth. Instead, the male develops a long straight tooth or tusk that protrudes two to three meters out of the upper left jaw. The tooth grows in a counterclockwise spiral. The tusk is unique to male narwhals. Very rarely, a female will grow a tusk, or a narwhal will grow two tusks. Tusks imported from the Arctic, perhaps by the Vikings, reached Europe in the Mediterranean and even the Far East as early as the Middle Ages and became the source of the unicorn myth. The tusks were solid without good description of the animal from which they came and inspired a great deal of fantasy. In order for the narwhals to communicate through deep icy waters of the Arctic Ocean, they adapted much higher range of echolocation, which consists of very high clicks, squeals, and whistles. Though the battle of competition and survival make many of these species rivals, a few major problems unify them. Thanks to today's society, these Arctic animals suffer from global warming, in which their home is melting away. Oil spills from oil drilling and hunting. Narwhals are close to extinct because humans are hunting them for their exotic tusks. Majority of polar bears are dying because of global warming. If we try to become eco-friendly, we could save these wonderful creatures from extinction. The animals of the Arctic tundra evolved to survive with the environment. Most sea animals in the Arctic have thicker blubber than other sea creatures in the ocean.